the army. We're going to fight and get them out of prison. What do you think they did? That's right, Roy. Excellent. They did. They said they're not going to leave him. And so the strongest of all the brothers was the leader and the king. If you look at his picture on his clothing. Yeah, I am right like Yehuda Maccabee. His name is also Yehuda. You're we just learning about another Yehuda in, in Hanukkah. That's right. This is Yehuda. From Yehuda, all the kings of the Jewish people came. David the Melech and Shlomo Melech and Mashiach, the old grand, great, 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 great grandchildren of Yehuda. And Yehuda stepped forward and Yehuda said, that's not fair. You don't know for sure he took it. And Yosef said, yes. He took it and he has to be my slave. So Yehuda said, take me instead. I'm stronger. And I can make a bigger, a better general in your army. And I'm older. I will be much better slave than little Binyami. And Joseph said, no, he has to be my slave. And all the brothers started to talk. And they said, I, Hashem is making this happen to us. Because remember what we did to Yosef many years ago? We threw him in the pit. Oh, we're so sorry. We feel so bad that we did that to Yosef. And they were doing to Shuvayel. They said, Hashem must be doing this to us now because many years ago we threw Yosef in the pit and we sold him as a slave to Paro. And they felt so bad that they did that. And they came to the king, who was really Yosef. And they said, we will all be your slaves. You take us all as your slaves. None of us are leaving Binyamin behind. We're all staying with him. And we're all going to be your slaves. And Yosef couldn't help himself. And he turned around quickly and he started to cry. Not so much because he was sad, but because he was very emotional. He was feeling so much. He was, oh my gosh, my brothers are feeling bad that they sold me. And he started to cry and he sent all the soldiers out of the room. All the Egyptians who were there. Yosef said, leave, leave the room. Don't stay here. I don't want you here anymore. Go out of my private chamber. So he says, oh, all right, King Paro. We're go." I mean, sorry, King Yosef. I'm sorry. He was not called Yosef. He was called Tzofnat Paineh. He says, okay, we're going. And he left. All the soldiers left. And all the Egyptians left. And now the only ones in the room were Yaakov and his brothers. And Yaakov, I keep saying Yaakov, I'm sorry, children, Yosef. Were Yosef and his 11 brothers. And Yosef came forward. And he said, don't be scared of me. I'm really your brother. I'm really Yosef. Look. When I was little, I didn't have a beard yet. And I didn't have a crown on my head or anything. But look, he showed them he was really a Jewish boy. He was really Jewish. And he said, look. And he started to talk to them in Hebrew, just like he did at home. And he said, I'm really your brother, Yosef. And all the brothers said, oh my goodness. We didn't know it was you. We're so sorry. Yosef said, no, it's okay, it's okay. Hashem made it happen. It wasn't your fault. Hashem really wanted me to come to Mitzrayim to become the king, to save the whole world from hunger. Because another five years, there's not going to be any food. And I collected all of the food, enough for everyone to eat. So it's a good thing I came down to Mitzrayim. It's a good thing I became the king. I'm the king, so I collected food for everyone to eat. And now quickly, quickly, go back to my father, to Yaakov. And they says, is my father still alive? How the Vichai is my father, is Yaakov still alive? And they said, yes, of course, he's still alive. And he said, please quickly go back and take wagons full of food. Tell him I'm alive and tell him. 
that I am the king. Tell me. Right. And yeah, girls have sent you a special wagons. He took wagons and he filled them with wheat. Tons and tons of food and clothing and gold. And he sent animals like donkeys. He sent everything that Yaakov might eat. He also sent, now usually children, horses full wagons or donkeys. But this time, he sent a very strange animal to pull the wagon. Sheep? Right, it looks like a sheep or cow. Actually, this is a baby cow. It's, it's called a calf. Cow. It's called an egla. It's not such a. It's called an egla. It's a calf. And this, yeah, Yo Yosef sent the wagons with calves to pull. Calves were pulling the wagons, not horses and not donkeys. And even though Egypt had the best donkeys, uh, sorry, the best horses in the whole world, Yosef sent it with calves. You know why? Because the last thing that Yosef learned with his Abba, with his daddy Yaakov, this is his daddy Yaakov, remember Yaakov, we didn't see him in a while, Yaakov, when he was a little boy, when he was, when he was a young boy, when he was only 17 hey, years old, remember? when he left his father's house, the last thing they were learning about hey, were the halachot, the Torah, what Torah teaches about an egla arufa, what the Torah teaches about a young calf, and he wanted to send a message to his daddy to say, Daddy, even though I lived in Mitzrayim for so many years, for 22 years, even though I am the king of Mitzrayim, I didn't forget the Torah you taught me. I still remember all the halachot that talk about Egla Arufa, about a little calf. I remember that top Torah you taught me and I'm still a Jewish boy and I still live according to the Torah and keep the mitzvot. And the brothers, Yosef said, don't fight on the way. When you're going back home, don't fight. Don't get into arguments. Why did you sell Yosef? Why didn't you sell Yosef? Why did we sell him? Just go together and be friends. Know that Hashem was the one who made it happen. Hashem wanted me to go to Mitzrayim and collect all the food for the entire world. So the brothers go and they come to Yaakov. And you know what? Yaakov was sitting very sad like always. For many years, Yaakov was very sad because he thought that Yosef passed away. He thought a bad animal ate him up. And he felt very sad. He was sitting, oh, my Yosef, I miss my Yosef. Well, the brothers said, oh no, what are we going to do? We can't just go and tell him, Daddy Yaakov, Yosef is alive. He's a king in Mitzrayim. It might give him a big shock. And he's an old man. And it might hurt his heart. It might confuse him and he's going to be all confused. So they didn't know how to tell him. And each one said, no, you tell him. No, you tell him. Then who will tell him? And there was a young girl. Her name was Sarah. Sarah was the daughter of Asher. See, this one is Asher. Asher is the one with the tree on him. Asher got a bracha many years later. He'll have lots of olive trees. And it also tells us that all of Asher's daughters were very, very beautiful. And they all married Kohanim Gedoli many years later. Asher had a very special daughter. So his daughters were all very special. And her name was Sarah. Can you say Sarah? Sarah. Bat Asher. Her name was Sarah Bat Asher. Sarah Bat Asher was a very special girl. She was very, of course, she was Jewish. Yes, she was. She was Asher's daughter, and she was the granddaughter of uh, of Yaakov. Her grandfather, her Baba June, was Yaakov. And oops, one second, sorry. Sarah used to love to play the kinor, the harp. She was very good, right? She was very good at playing music. And she said, I know what I'll do. Every day, I try to make Grandfather Yosef feel, uh, Grandfather Yaakov feel better. I sing songs for him. I know what I'll do. I'll sing songs for him. And this time I'll sing to Yosef is and that he's a king in Mitzrayim. And she came to her grandfather Yaakov and she said, Grandfather Yaakov, 
Grandpa, can I sing you a song and make you feel better? And Yaakov said, oh, thank you so much, Sarah. I would love that. She took out her heart and she started to sing. Yosef is alive. He's a king in Mitzrayim. He has two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. Yosef is alive. He's the king of Mitzrayim. He has two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. She kept on singing this song. At first, Jacob was just listening to the music. Then he started to listen to the lyrics, to the words. He said, Sarah, what are you singing? Singing it again. And she sang again. She said, El Yosef is alive. He's the king of Mitzrayim. He has two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. She kept on singing. And Yaakov said, you're singing that Yosef is alive. She said, that's right. Grandpa Yaakov, El Yosef is alive. And he's the king of Mitzrayim and he's healthy and well. And he married a wonderful Jewish girl. Her name is Osnat. And he has two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. Yaakov said, I can't believe it. And all the brothers came. And they said, yes, Daddy Yosef never got eaten up by a wild animal. He ended up being a slave who went down to Mitzrayim. And in Mitzrayim, he became a big king. And he said, I'm not sure. I don't know. And they said, look, here are the wagons with all of the food. Yaakov sent us lots of food. Lots of wheat. Hey, sorry, I keep saying Yaakov. Yosef sent us lots of wagons filled with food. And Yaakov looked and suddenly he sees the young calf. He sees the eggla. And he says, oh my goodness, it must be true. I remember the last thing we learned when I left him was the Torah about, the Torah teaches us about an eggla. And Yaakov was so happy and he said, thank you, Hashem. He said, quickly, let's go. And the whole family, Yaakov and all of the mummies and all of the dad daddies, the whole family came down to Mitzrayim. Yaladim, as they were entering the gates of Mitzrayim, as they were coming into the walls through the gates to enter Egypt, to enter Mitzrayim, a very special little baby girl was born. We're not learning about her this week so much, but she's very important. Her name is Yocheved. Yocheved Yeladim would grow up to be the mummy of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe would take the Jewish people out of Egypt, out of Mitzrayim. You know why? Hashem knew that King Paro in the end will become very bad. And he will make all the Jews into slaves. So as soon as they were coming into Egypt, as soon as they were coming into Mitzrayim, Hashem made sure that Yocheved would be born. Yocheved, who would have a baby, Moshe, would help the Jews to come out of Mitzrayim. Either way, they come to Mitzrayim. And Yosef runs to his daddy. And his daddy, Yaakov, runs to him. And... Uh, they give each other a big hug and they kiss. They loved each other so much. Yaakov was so happy that Yosef was still alive. But you know what Yaakov was doing when he hugged him? He took his hand and he put it on his eyes. What do we say when we cover our eyes? We say Shema. Yaakov was saying Shema as soon as he saw Yosef. To really thank Hashem. Because anything good ever happens, we always say thank you to Hashem. And he came and he met Paro. <coughs> and Paro said, Your son Yosef is so special. I'm so happy you came to me trying. Yaakov said, I'm going to give you a bracha. He gave him a bracha. He blessed him. He should be very, very successful and very rich. And true enough, Yes, Yaakov gave a bracha to Paro. We're going to see how Paro turns it in Parashat Shemot later on. Instead of saying, oh, thank you, it all came from Hashem, it all came from Yaakov's bracha. 
And so he kept saying, I'm a God, I'm so strong, I'm so special. But it was a big lie. Really? Sorry, no, I'm sorry, Mom. Um, Michali, what you asking, sweetie? No, no, not in this week's parish. No, he never heard yet. Go. Later on, we're going to learn the power becomes bad, but not in this week's parish, and he never heard yet. And he told, he told, yeah, Yosef, take all your brothers and your father and put them to live in Ramses. Ramses was the best part of the land. He gave them the richest and the best part of the land. And still, Yaladim, Paro was becoming richer and richer because nobody had any food to eat. And people from all over the world were very, very hungry. There was nothing to eat. Only Mitzrayim had food and only Yosef had food. And from all over the world, people kept on coming and saying, Oh, please sell us food. We're so hungry. We have nothing to eat. And people from all over the world. Yeah, I'm going to put it a little closer so you can see. People from all over the world would come to buy food from Mitzrayim. And Mitzrayim, Yeladim, became the richest country in the whole world. Because all the money from all over the world kept on coming. People brought their money. And their jewels, their gold, whatever they had. And they kept bringing cases and cases of money to Mitzrayim to buy food. And even in Mitzrayim, all the people kept giving money to Yosef to have... What, Ali, what did he ask? Actually, no, they didn't sell it. It stayed in special warehouses, in special treasure houses in Mitzrayim. And Yaladim, in this week's parsha, all the Jewish people and the 12 Shvatim, the Jewish people in the, at that time were 70. There were 70 Jews 